Hi, I'm Chip Elmblad, Storage Solution Architect at IBM. In this video series, I'm going to demonstrate a few common storage administration tasks with the XIV Storage System GUI. In this session, we will provision XIV storage in under two minutes. Let's get started. First, we are going to define a new host, which is a very simple process. All we do is choose Add Host and give it a name. We'll call it Martin. Now let's add the HBAs. Choose Add Port. In the view here, XIV will automatically show you all the new worldwide names it sees on the fabric. Let's repeat for the second HBA that belongs to Martin. And we're done. The system is ready to go. Let's verify that the host is connected, zoned, and configured correctly. In the host connectivity view, we can see eight connections, two to each of the interface modules. Now let's look at storage pools, dynamic buckets of storage that can be resized on the fly. For example, let's take this existing pool and cut it down to 7.5 terabytes. Let's create another pool here. We'll give it 15 terabytes of space. Notice XIV always rounds up to the next multiple of 17. We'll give it 5 terabytes of snapshot space and call it databases. Again, XIV pools are completely dynamic, configurable on the fly. We can change this pool to a thin pool. We'll hold the soft capacity at 15 terabytes, but let's cut the hard capacity or the backing store in half to 7.5 terabytes. In other words, making it 100% over provisioned. Now let's go ahead and create some volumes. Choose the pool you want to place them in. How many you want to create? We'll create five. And the size. And let's call the volumes warehouse one through five. Note that you can supply gigabytes, gibibytes, or blocks. And it's done. These volumes are created. Now it's a simple task to map these volumes. Choose the server. We'll pick Martin. Review these LUN numbers one through five. They look good, so we'll hit Map. And we're done. These five volumes are now visible on Server Martin. That's how easy it is to provision XIV storage. Now let's work with snapshots. In this session, we're going to configure space-efficient, near-instant XIV snapshots. Let's create a volume to work with. We'll call it app one now let's create a snapshot. All we do is give it a name. Let's call it Backup. And there it is. It took about 150 milliseconds to complete. By default, snapshots are locked. Let's choose Unlock, and now we have a read-write copy. Then we can simply map this snap to a host, which gives us a point-in-time backup of App01. You are not limited to one backup here. XIV supports a large number of snaps and volumes, so let's create several more. We'll create one called Dev, and another called Test, and another snapshot called Stage. Again, keep in mind that these XIV snaps are differential space-efficient copies. No full volume copies are needed. Now it's super easy to refresh the snaps, for example, development with current data from the app one master volume. Similarly, we can copy from one XIV snapshot to another, for example, let's refresh Test. Just choose where you want to take the data from. We'll copy from Dev. And now we have instantly refreshed Test with data from Dev. We can also take snaps of snaps. Let's take a snapshot of Test called Test2. And let's create a grandchild, a snap of a snap called test3. Now let's go over to the snapshot tree where you can see the hierarchy. Check out something cool. We can actually delete a snapshot in the hierarchy without invalidating any of the other snapshots in the hierarchy. Try that on a copy on write system. It won't work. Let's take a look at the XIV architecture to see why snapshots are so simple and quick. 
On XIV, files being written to a volume are ultimately stored as one megabyte chunks in the system. The volume, or the LUN, is simply a collection of pointers to the location of that data. So in order to create a snapshot, it's a near instantaneous process because XIV is just duplicating those structures, which gives us two views into the data. So, when a new write command comes into the master volume, it is updated with pointers to the data, but the snap is not. When we delete a file, the pointers are zeroed out from the volume, but retained on the snap. Finally, when we restore the snap to the volume, all we do is copy the pointers from the snap and apply them to the volume, thus instantly restoring them to their state when the snap was created. What you will notice is that for this entire process, all we are doing is manipulating data structures in memory. There is no overhead intensive movement of data or need for tracking tables, which is how XIV achieves high performance. There you have it, space efficient, near instant XIV snapshots designed for rapid, reliable restore. Now let's turn to mirroring. In this session, we're going to configure two XIV systems for mirroring, setting up both synchronous and asynchronous replication. To configure the system, let's go into Mirroring Connectivity. We will draw a line between these two systems, Apollo and Starbuck, to define the connectivity. XIV will automatically detect systems that are connected or zoned to each other. We will approve these proposed connectivity changes, the white lines. And after a few seconds, the lines have turned green, indicating that bidirectional connectivity exists. Now we are ready to proceed with setting up the mirror. So let's stay here on Apollo and create a volume for which we'll create a synchronous mirror. Let's call the volume Data01. We right click on the volume and select Create Mirror. For this first one, let's choose Synchronous Mirroring. We're going to sync to Target System Starbuck. Check Create Slave. Put the remote volume in a pool called XPool. We'll call the remote side volume Data01. Now, if we go to the mirroring view, we see that this mirror is in an inactive state. So let's activate it. Now we're done. We have a synchronized copy between these two XIV systems. So now we can complete all the typical mirroring operations in a few clicks. For example, with one command, we can choose Switch Role, which automatically reverses the right enabled copy. We are replicating in the opposite direction. You can see locally the mirroring icon has changed from an M to an S, which indicates that the Data01 volume is now a slave. Let's repeat the process, this time configuring asynchronous mirroring. We'll create a second volume. Let's call this one Data02. When creating the mirror this time, let's choose asynchronous mirroring. Again, transmit to target system Starbuck. Have the system create the slave volume for us. Put it in X pool. Let's choose a 30 second RPO and hit create. Now returning to the mirroring view, we see that Data02 is in an inactive state. We'll activate it. And we have a status of RPO OK. You can see in the effective RPO column that we are going to approach that RPO of 30 seconds, and then the counter will reset back to zero. This is telling us in near real time how many seconds the slave volume currency is lagging behind the master. There you have it, sync and async mirroring configured to protect your data locally and or remote. Next, let's take a look at performance statistics. This session will demo reviewing graphically based XIV performance statistics and customizing the system for targeted use. The IOPS bar shows in near real time that we're doing about 45,000 IOPS. For more detail, we'll go to the statistics view. A year's worth of statistics on the XIV box is available, with no management server needed. Right here we're looking at the past month of performance data. With the split screen feature, we now have two different views. Let's put a little more data up on these screens. For example, up top, let's add latency and bandwidth to the view. On the bottom, let's focus on reads. 
but let's break out hits and misses separately. Now let's zoom in on a particular time period, and the system automatically synchronizes these two times. This tool adjusts the view. We can drill further to a specific time frame. This view makes it simple to see what the system has been doing. This filter pane gives you the ability to view specific interface modules, volumes, hosts, etc. Select and see performance only on the elements that you care about. Once you have the view you want, it is super easy to print or to save the data as a CSV file for spreadsheet access. With this beautiful XIV GUI, we don't know why you would need to view the stats anywhere else, but it's available to you should you want to. And that's just a taste of the robust XIV monitoring capabilities and flexibility. I hope you found this GUI demonstration informative. Stay tuned for more XIV content on IBM.com.